In this episode, we'll be talking about how service design can drive business innovation. We'll talk about how we can use computer-based tools to assist in the design of better services. And finally, how can we measure and evaluate the impact we actually have on the user experience? Here's the guest for this episode. Let the show begin. Hello, I'm Yong Se Kim. This is a service design show. Hi, I'm Mark and welcome to a new episode of the Service Design Show. This show is all about helping you to design services that have a positive impact on people and are good for business. My guest in this episode is a former Stanford University graduate. He has a long history in regards to design and creativity. Currently, he is a service design professor at the Shan Jung Wan University in Korea. His name is Young Se Kim. In this episode, we'll be talking about how service design can drive business innovation. We'll talk about how we can use computer-based tools to assist in the design of better services. And we'll talk about how we can measure and evaluate the impact we have on the actual user experience. We post new videos every week here on this channel. So if you haven't done it already, be sure to subscribe and click that bell icon so you'll be notified when new videos are out. And if you'd like to learn how to explain service design in plain English, check out the free course that I've got for you by heading to servicedesignshow.com slash free course. So that's all for the introduction. And now let's quickly jump into the interview with Youngse. Welcome to the show, Youngse. Okay. Thank you for uh, inviting me. It is my great pleasure to join your show. Cool. I, I'm really excited to have you on. You're the first one from Korea on the show. I hope a lot more guests will follow. Um, you've been in the design, the creative, the innovation field for so long, uh, way before design thinking and service design became the popular terms. We'll talk about that in a second. But do you remember your very first memory of service design? When did you get in touch with the term? Okay. I I think I mean the uh, specifically what I recall is uh, probably I uh, heard about service design informally without recognizing much. But specifically when I uh, attended a conference in Paris, uh, 2007, mm -hmm. that is a design society conference, mm -hmm. and um, I uh, the. Uh, uh, watched the presentation by uh, Tim McAloon's uh, team. Uh, uh, Professor McAloon is at uh, TU Denmark. All right. And yeah. they talked about their research project on product services systems. So that's where I uh, first uh, encountered, I think, if I kind of <laughs> trace down. Uh, so the, they were doing the nice uh, product services system design project there. So, okay, so how the, the in com comparison to product design, the, how the service design component, which is a relatively new, uh, should be developed kind yeah. of uh, interest me. So it, that's how yeah. I started uh, service design. I, I, I've noticed that product service systems is really a term that lives in academia. I, I see it here in TU Delft and TU Eindhoven. That's the term mm -hmm. they usually use for service design related stuff, right? It's product system, mm -hmm. products. Product service. services systems. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. You sent me three really interesting topics. And of course, I've sent um, the question starters all the way uh, to Korea. You have them. Uh, are you ready to start with the first topic? Yes. Okay. Let's go. Um, it's here and it's called uh, business innovation and service design. And do you have a question starter that goes along with this one? And can you show it? And I think we need to revise this. <laughs> This okay. Topic. Uh, I think uh, I would say the. I would pick how much. How much? Yeah. Okay. How much service design is uh, actually done for business innovation? So that and, is. Yeah. That would be my question. And and before we dive into this topic, this is also somewhat the title of a book that is just out, right? You've written a book with almost the same title. Yes, yes. I mean, the, the, my book, 
just came out uh, last week is a uh, business innovation service design. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the, 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 it, it could be just a service design. The title <laughs> could be just a service design, but I wanted to uh, make us some point that the, uh, the method, the, my service design method is probably more uh, suitable for business innovation right. rather okay. than yeah, other kind of a topics. Yeah. So, so that how, was the, yeah. Uh, how how much how much is service design focused on business innovation? What's your perspective on that? This this is this probably uh, represent the, the the current Korean situation. Hmm. I mean the uh, in Korea the the term service design became very very popular around the 2009 2010 the kind of a time frame, and every basically every design. Uh, educators and every design consultancies, they wanted to jump onto the service design wagon. Hmm. And but looking at the almost the ten years from now, uh, these days in Korea, a lot of a service design project is about social innovation project and related with the government. All right. and there are some significant development uh, the healthcare service design, but uh, we don't see uh, enough. Uh, business innovation cases yet hmm. so which is uh, the, what uh, we regret and we want to kind of make sure that the, uh, not only social innovation but we want to make sure that business innovation is going to be the one of the key target uh, on service designing so that is uh, some of the intent how I term my uh, that gave a title for my book and so that this is uh, the kind of a question how much and maybe the situation will be different in Europe, mm -hmm. uh, maybe different in other countries. But uh, that is uh, the current uh, question that we have in Korea now. That's really interesting so, because my, my previous guest uh, was from uh, Colombia and he okay. actually said uh, all the service design work is done in the commercial sector. Almost nothing is happening in the public or the social sector. And you're describing mm -hmm. that the situation in Korea is uh, exactly the opposite. Any it, any it, ideas? It, how? Yeah, yeah the, to, to make it clear, I mean, that many of the service design activities are done in commercial sectors as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. But those are newly new services cannot perform as a critical role in kind of a revenue making mm -hmm. uh, role. Mm -hmm. So it is rather used as a supportive activity. Maybe it, it is used to promote products. Right. Maybe it is uh, used to promote uh, house sales. Okay. But uh, uh, I think uh, the more specific the revenue uh, creating services could be made. Mm. So, so that is something that I would like to see in the coming days so that was yeah. my point so so what is uh what is holding this adoption back or if i reformulate this question what do you think needs to happen to accelerate this uh adoption of service design for business innovation i think it, it requires the those uh the the buyers of a service design uh the a work and then their concept still is related with a, uh, a kind of a more tangible outcome. Mm -hmm. They may want to be able to pay for tangible outcomes. So their business issues are still coming from uh, the, the revenue obtained from the, the tangible things. Mm. So that is one of the key uh, challenges that we have. And it's been there. I mean, the, we it was like that almost 10 years ago. And then it is a still... Uh, not much improved, uh, even though the government actually tries to make us some help that manufacturing companies to move into servitization. Right. But that is uh, very slow uh, compared to the government effort and some of the academia effort. So that so, is something. Yeah. yeah. So th there is still a really strong manufacturing mindset, a really strong yes, yes, out output yes. product oriented mindset yes, yes. That, that that is driving yeah. and also yeah. a, a lot of uh, the the ux issues user interface issues for some of those uh, digital services but it is regarded as a uh, uh, not as the key money uh, money making uh, asset mm -hmm. it is something that you should do uh, anyway to continue your business so that is uh, some of the the issue that 
uh, I think uh, we should uh, keep improving. Yeah, and I, I think a lot of service designers can relate to this challenge. So how you know how do we help uh, a company which has a strong heritage in uh, manufacturing in a product mindset where the whole organization structure is focused around pushing boxes out the door, right? How do you help them mm -hmm. to see and adopt a service design to actually create new revenue streams? Well, what did you write about this in your book? Can you give us some insights? How do you have, how, how do you approach conversations with these organizations? Uh, I, I think uh, uh, we may want to identify the uh, user kind of a uh, behavior and experience more tightly mm -hmm. so that through that we can develop some uh, the new uh, the service based uh, revenue opportunities and in my book and then the uh, the another book which may come hopefully soon mm -hmm. uh, we kind of a uh, uh, identify service concepts along some kind of a uh, different stages and then that kind of a uh, the the method could help to to see how uh, more obvious service concepts like uh, for example the, the the commodity sales and then the maintenance uh, the services to which could in, enhance a more uh, the user behavior oriented uh, the services, mm. which could lead into the uh, new revenue making. So we are developing that kind of a uh, method and then uh, trying to apply that with some companies. Mm. I, I, I guess it, it um, one of the hardest things f that I see with manufacturing oriented companies is they, if they start investing in um, a new uh, venture they want to have it replace existing streams uh, of revenue but it's really hard to replace uh, a product revenue stream with a service revenue stream it's it's yeah it's a it's a big challenge if uh, i know you've uh, gotten this question a lot uh, lately but uh, the book is written right now in korean and we talked about this before the show uh, do you expect that an English-based version will come out any day soon? Uh, I don't know. I mean that. <laughs> uh, I mean that. Yeah, it. It. I. I think uh, it may be uh, useful. Mm -hmm. uh, be, uh, although I have uh, kind of a in the uh, conferences, I've explained uh, my uh, methodologies, but uh, not in its entirety as shown in the book. So. Uh, but uh, usually I'm very lazy in writing books, so uh, it, it may not be, uh, I mean, it's very difficult to make a promise, but uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll try to somehow deliver the content, well, uh, maybe not in its entirety. All right. All right. Cool. Let's hope that it comes out. Um, let's move on to topic number two, because this one is, um, cryptic and i'm sure you have a really interesting story around this one and this one topic number two is called representation and once again the question mm -hmm. to you do you have a question starter that goes along with this one i'm really curious representation okay all right what if is the, my choice and what if you could use representation of a uh, uh, customer activities or representation of a uh, uh, the product services systems uh, used to develop the new service or to design new product services systems. So how that kind of uh, representations could be used in supporting service design activities. So that is going to be something that I'm interested in. I, uh, I'm, I'm struggling to uh, understand representations what what are you thinking about when you hear the word representations what, what do so you... for example i mean that i would i would put it in a more like a formal representation mm -hmm. or computer-based representation mm -hmm. and if you look at the the computer-aided design uh the kind of a history uh in 1970s early 1970s some of those representation of how 
we represent, for example, this kind of a solid object. Mm -hmm. That research started uh, like uh, 50 years ago. And then over like uh, 20, uh, 30 years since then, uh, the, the CAD systems has been kind of uh, used in most companies, which is used in supporting design creativity, supporting design efficiencies. And I think at some point, the service design field needs that kind of a tool. So it requires a, how we should represent human activity, right. which is going to be different from the physical things. Yes. Uh, yeah. It should be represented in a computer uh, system so that this could be used in designing better activities and better services. So uh, we have developed uh, some of those uh, representations and some of those uh, uh, the software-based the design support tools as a research project. We have not moved that into the commercial product yet, but this is going to be some of the issue on the research community related to the service design may needs to think about. Hmm. For example, a lot of people talk about the digital transformation, but we should also think about the digital transformation of a service design and activity itself. So that is something that uh, I think uh, probably research done about this time is going to be uh, used in maybe in 10 years, in, tw in 20 years. So I think uh, some part of our community should be worrying about that. And I would put myself one of those people <laughs> doing that. So uh, just to see that I really, really understand what you're saying, uh, in the same way that we've developed, for instance, um, uh, tools to model physical objects uh, on a screen, uh, all the CAD mm -hmm. uh, software, um, mm -hmm. in the same way you're thinking about how can we use computer-aided tools to model user experience or model yes. a, a journey or model i don't know right, Is, right? that's what you are thinking it's basically of. Human activity, yeah. yeah and um what are your what have you seen that really interests you are there any tools out there uh, of which you think well this is an interesting starting point for the next 10 or 20 years because for me it's really hard to think about how to model or shape a user or customer experience on a screen? Uh, it, it, well, on, on, a, on a screen in a way, but mm -hmm. on, in a computer right. way, in a digital manner in a yeah. way. So well, we developed what, it, uh, what I call the context-based activity modeling, which kinds of uh, the, some of the uh, representation language, modeling language for human activities in a more formal sense. And uh, particularly, we emphasize the, on the context part and how, I mean, the, even though it is the same activity, by the looking at different contexts, uh, it have a different, uh, it's related with a different uh, value themes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we have uh, uh, that defined, and then we have uh, our own computer-based uh, tool for that. And actually, we are using that to designing new activities, for example, what if we change, the, suppose the current activity, the, the location is outside. Mm -hmm. But what if we change the current location context to inside? And then that is going to be, uh, could really lead to improvement of the values. So uh, yeah. this is a kind of a design support tool is not to replace uh, creativity, but it allows some uh, something that designers can kind of a use in generating the creative ideas. Yeah. And, and it, so that's yeah. something that we are working on. And, and it probably, uh, it will allow us to uh, test and prototype ideas and concepts much more, much faster, right? That That's the yeah, whole... It, it, yeah, yes. And it probably this is something that I always, I mean, as an educator at the university, uh, probably this kind of a tool will not make really, really creative designers, mm -hmm. but it can help some of the design students who whose creativity level is at this. Mm -hmm. Maybe through this kind of a tool, it could be kind of improved that way. Right. So, so we are uh, thinking about that kind of issues, and this is about the uh, uh, six p.m. The sun. Is yeah, I see the sun. <laughs> do, do, do you want to close the curtain or do, is it okay with you? Uh, 
I, I think that I can rearrange some of those uh, mm-hmm. curtains, or yeah, even okay. even I change my position. Yeah, yeah. That's better. That's right? better. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. A, a final thought about this: the first, while you are describing this with my limited imagination, the first thing that comes to my mind is, for instance, creating. Uh, environments and situations in virtual reality or augmented reality and then going through that experience um, as a simulation of that that journey is that also uh, the way you're thinking about these computer-aided tools or do you have completely different ideas about that yeah I, the my computer uh, based the tools are not that fancy yet. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. In other words, it's not virtual, it's not augmented, but it's about the reality itself. Okay. Okay. So it is a it is a it is a bookkeeping tool. So for example, it it can kind of uh, help the designers to uh, to follow his own designing activities. Uh, the kind of uh, so that the, his design knowledge could be acquired. So that it could be used in designing the new design project. So that is the kind of a tool which does not require the, the very fancy technology, but it is more about the uh, the bookkeeping it uh, kind of a uh, in a very uh, well structured uh, uh, the database systems. So the that way you can kind of a reuse your knowledge on and on and i think uh, compared to the the product design yeah the human activity design uh didn't have a much of the uh the effort emphasizing those issues and for example i teach about the issue on affordance and the affordance is for example we have uh, this kind of a nice grasping affordance features mm-hmm. Before this feature, what is more important is the human activity of a grasping. So we want to kind of, a, but in a computer-based model, we have a very good way to represent this, but not the activity itself. Right, so right. So this is right. something uh, missing in a way. Hmm. So uh, we want to provide the, uh, the kind of a complete linkage between human activity and, and uh, even these kind of uh, artifact uh the physical uh the properties it's super interesting topic that i hope we'll talk much more about on the show in the future how do we use uh computer aided design tools to design better experiences i think that's a really interesting field that we don't know a lot about right now but uh yeah it's good that we're already discussing this I... the third and final topic is called experience evaluation and i'm sure mm-hmm. you also have a question starter that goes along with this topic and that is okay how can we how can we evaluate the user experiences in kind of a in a, a more uh, useful way mm-hmm. so that is uh, my question on on this third topic and what is, of course, your perspective on this? How 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 do we evaluate user experience? So I mean, the, the, everybody talks about these days user experiences, customer experiences are the most important. Yeah. But the, how well uh, can we actually evaluate those uh, the user experience is my question. I mean, the uh, the the still I think many people are relying on surveys. Mm. But uh, those people on related areas say, oh, no, no, no. Always the survey doesn't match the reality. So then the, what would be the better way to understand the customer experience? And before, I mean, the not based on the, the, the customer's memory, mm-hmm. uh, which could be done much more in a real time, mm-hmm. but still take that experience evaluation in a digital form so that kind of a experience evaluation is not used as a prototyping uh, the evaluation tool, 
but it could be used as ongoing stuff. I mean, that you want mm-hmm. to kind of provide a new service and evaluate the customer's experience, even uh, in many cases, the experiences of the service providers are also very important. And it needs to be kept kind of uh, monitored, and then uh, it is going to be used to develop the, the new service. So it, it, it's a kind of an iteration, and my service design process is composed of a value modeling, human activity design, interaction design, and experience management, mm-hmm. it should kind of uh, keep moving. Mm-hmm. But I don't think uh, if we rely on surveys, if we kind of want to evaluate the, the customer experience, maybe two or three days after the experience happened, mm-hmm. and it is not going to be right. So we need a better tool for that. We, we need to use more extensively on the experience evaluation. Uh, I think that's the, some of the important issue. Yeah, but this, I would say, uh, uh... This would be the golden uh, nugget right now in the design community. If we are sort of able to quantify or show the impact of our work, because that's what we we will be able to do if we can actually evaluate um, uh, the, the the sort of the impact of our activity. So, if it's not surveys, uh, surveys, if they are not uh, adequate, what what are you thinking about? How can we do this? I, I, I'm emphasizing that kind of a real-time experience evaluation uh, the method. Mm-hmm. Okay? So uh, the the survey may not be uh, enough, mm-hmm. and uh, some of those ways to uh, quickly get the user uh, evaluation input mm-hmm. without much uh, hindering their experience itself mm-hmm. this is going to be a very challenging issue yeah. though yeah in 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 a way that the uh, uh their the i mean the customer experience is going to be represented in a uh, in a uh, digital format and so we have developed a little bit uh, some of the uh, very simple tool uh for that and we are using it in many different cases and some of the new services that we uh, develop for uh, the the actual the real industry uh, manufacturing servitization project project actually uses that capability as a key uh, service uh, concepts. So uh, more and more effort uh, along that kind of a, uh, the effort should be done. And also we want to attach a lot of uh, the physical context information with the user evaluation. For example, these days, a lot of uh, the IoT sensors are available, mm-hmm. and those uh, sensor information is attached with the user subjective evaluation so that uh, we have a better understanding on the user behaviors, maybe users' experiences on very specific value themes. Uh, and then uh, this is kind of uh, related with uh, this kind of uh, passive data. And those active data and passive data can be attached uh, to understand better about the users and to be exploited in uh, designing new services. I think this is the kind of a uh, uh, technology, not a big technology, but mm-hmm. uh, some uh, useful tools uh, which could be developed and which could be used in service designing uh, in many different yeah. cases. So, so, so uh, you sparked my interest by saying that you have a really easy uh, and simple tool right now to evaluate the experience or partially. Can you give, what, what, what is that? How does it look? How does it work? Uh, it, it, uh, for example, um, if you have a trouble with the sleeping, for example, mm-hmm. okay, because it is a very hot day. So it's, I mean, it is too hot and then you kind of a uh, very difficult to get that uh, nice sleep. These days, everybody kind of, uh, when they go to bed, they kind of, uh, I don't know, I, when I go to sleep, this is within my reach. Mm-hmm. Okay. So somehow, if you could uh, self-report your sleeping experience, and this could be used uh, to customizing some of the uh, environment which uh, where that you, you sleep. So we have that kind of a tool developed. And it is uh, based on the self uh, self report, right? But, right. Uh, in this way, you don't have to worry about the uh, the 
uh, user privacy information. We, this is the mm-hmm. information the user gave of, on a voluntary uh, basis. And uh, using that, you know, the, the, the different preferences of uh, different users, which is could be used in customizing uh, some of the services that support your sleeping. Mm. Uh, I, I really like this way of thinking because it sort of um, gets to the essence. And your example with sleeping triggered my thought by thinking uh, I'm using um, uh, a Nest thermostat to control the heating in my house. For instance, if I change the temperature, that's a signal of uh, that the uh, environment or that my experience with the current environment is not optimal right when i change the when it, when i change the temperature up then it's probably that i'm feeling cold and and that of course this is like a mega simple oversimplified example but this way of self reporting and changing adapting your environment is a way to evaluate the existing experience right uh yes i mean the, the experience evaluation is going to be um, not as strong as a oh I want to lower the temperature. Yeah. But you just say, oh my God, it's too hot. Hmm, 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 hmm. So that that's what 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 you could get, and then the you can get at this particular temperature in this particular the physical context. This particular user said mm-hmm. it's so hot. Mm-hmm. Okay, so mm-hmm. that information is the evaluation. Right. So, and th- probably he will just go back to sleep, <laughs> but without without lowering the temperature. Yeah. But yeah. that is the experience report given by the user, and then we want to utilize that information. And and it in, will be, uh, uh, as you said, the challenging part will be how to. Uh, enable this reporting without sort of uh, interrupting or intrusing the existing exactly, experience. Yes, yeah. Yes. Yes. But, so, so that way, I mean, the uh, without even touching the smartphone, if if someone says like a, that, that means that, that he is hot. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then it, it may be good, but uh, uh, it is not there yet. So, but yeah, uh, it, it, this kind of a subjective evaluation given by the user is very valuable information and if we can take that information at right time Mm -hmm. in real time and probably it is going to uh, support the developing a better tool to help uh, the person's sleeping experience we uh we're going to move on to the final part of this uh episode and that is i'm going to invite you to ask us a question is there something on your mind that you would like to share with us or ask us a question about so for example i mean the for service designers and how much you would like to use uh kind of a uh the you know in a kind of a represent your own design experience and design knowledge uh, done when you are doing some certain project and accumulate that and how you are going to use it in your in your next project new project hmm. so uh, for example the typically the a lot of the designers are busy dealing with uh, their current activities and but how much reflection uh, you can do uh, so that that information can be uh, compiled so that it is going to be used by the designer themselves or in uh, by the other designers in the same agency or the the designers in the the community in general so so that kind of a uh, design knowledge acquisition particularly on service design uh, I would like to ask that to many of the uh, the service designers out there busy working on <laughs> any new project yeah, it makes sense because we are doing so much good work, but we share so little about what we do. It's it's challenging to document and share it in a in a way that is uh, maybe not standardized, but at least understood by uh, a larger part of the practice. Yes, yes. That then it it is going to be somehow help the the develop a better service design, and that is going to help the. Uh, 
more business innovation exactly, and better yeah. society. We will be able to professionalize our, our field much faster. A lot of things to think about, a lot of inspiration. Uh, so uh, thanks a lot, Young Tse. It was great talking to you. I hope we'll find more people, uh, interesting guests from Korea and learn about what, what's going on there. So once more, thanks again for sharing what's on your mind in this episode. Okay, thank you very much. It was my great uh, pleasure uh, to talk with you and then uh, hopefully to talk with a lot of uh, the listeners to your uh, service design show. I would appreciate their comments on my uh, effort and thinking. Thank cool. you very much. All right. If you enjoyed this episode and you know someone who might benefit from the things we've just discussed, make sure to grab the link and share that with them. I would really like, if you haven't done it already, that you subscribe to the channel so we can keep bringing you more videos like this. Thanks so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.